question? No question, sir. Okay. So we will be, uh, you will be on mute. Please don't unmute unless and until you have a question to ask. You can, then you can unmute it. Please be on mute in order to avoid the background noise. Sir. Okay. So what is information security? Information security is about protecting information in any form, in simple words. Information security is about protecting data from those who shouldn't be having access to it. And it's about protecting data in any form, be it paper, be it intellectual property, be it branding, reputation, or electronic form. Lot my times, people, what they do, they, I heard this question or sentence very common. Information, people interchangeably use information security and cyber security. Information security is superset. It's about, applica it's applicable to everything, like it includes physical security, it includes cyber security, it includes your application security, everything. It's about protecting data in any form. Data can exist in different forms. Okay, intellectual property, your physical form, digital form, etc. So factors that impact information security. As a trainer and as a working professional, I work with, when I say uh, as a trainer, as a working professional, I work with many organizations. I have been to many organizations. But wherever I go, just like, uh, I have been to training organization like Koenig Mercury for a batch, a simple training organization in Delhi for a batch. At the same time, I have been to Wells Fargo, MetLife, which are purely a banking organization. And at the same time, I've been to Accenture and my organization, which is our telco as well as MSS providers. So I found security different in all the organization. In company like, in training company like Koenig and Mercury, no one was, means they escorted me for the first day of the, on the first day. And after that, they will leave bothered where I'm coming, where I'm going, no, at what time I'm coming, what time I'm going, they will leave bothered about it. But at the same time, Wells Fargo, MetLife, I was not allowed to enter the organization with mobile having cameras. So what is the thing which is making it different? It is the business, which is making it different. Then you have service providers you have. If you have technology, the kind of technology that you're using, the platforms that you're using, or even if you are using some new or security tool. So all these factors have a great impact on information security. So what is cyber security? I, I told you people, a lot of my times people use this term, information security and cyber security. When I was heading the SOC, now I'm into a different role, around I was in SOC from 2008 to 2020, to be more honest, and I worked in different roles, L2, L3 head, manager, head of security, many roles. And many times when I interact with people, they say to me, hey, uh, Ajit, I'm into network security. I want to move into cyber security. I have made network security. I want to move into information security. Then I said, wait, even if you are into network security, you are already into cyber security. So cyber security is, is concerned with protecting data in a digital form. Okay. So be it application security, okay, be it application. be it mobile security, okay, be it network security, be it wireless security, it is all cyber. Cyber security is concerned with protection of a data in digital form. In digital form, data exists in three states. Data at rest, data in transit. Awesome. And data in ah, transit promotion, whatever you call it, and use. So data at rest 
when your data is stored in hard drive, USB drive, correct? Storage area network. Data in transit, when data is stored, data is uh, like in motion or data in transit, like when, when data is transmitted over LAN, WAN, wireless area network within your organization or outside the organization over internet. Right now, if I talk about my Google Drive, that is what? Data at rest. If I talk about my Google Drive, that is what? Data at rest. But when you download, definitely after this class, you will download the material. You will try to download the material from that book or from that drive. So that is what? Data in transit. So data at rest can be protected with AES encryption. Data in transit can be protected with IPsec, TLS. For data in use, data in use is like data in RAM, cache register, waiting for it to be processed by a processor. Okay, for that, you still don't have, this is where the vulnerability lies. Although industry is working on one kind of encryption called homomorphic encryption. Okay, so when we talk about cybersecurity, cybersecurity is practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems and networks from malicious attacks. Okay, it can also be defined as protection of information assets by addressing threats to information process. If you look at information processed, this is what data in use, information stored, data at rest. Information transmitted, data in transit or data in motion. The so cybersecurity is about protecting data in digital form. These three states. So I always say that. Don't say that you want to move into cybersecurity or info security. Say I want to move into compliance and audit. I want to move into mobile security, application security, or even a privacy. So why cybersecurity is important? Due to the technological advancement, rate of cyber crime is increasing. If you see till 2005 or six, I can say that uh, it is, a, we, we used to use ATM cards or do physical banking. But I remember in 2016 when demonetization happened, okay? I realized when I went, when I, when I stood in a queue <laughs> for withdrawing money, I realized that I, I was, visiting my bank after eight long years, eight or nine long years. So you see technology is increasing day by day. You can see earlier days, it was not easy for hackers to withdraw money or take out money because it was safe physically. You have to go there and take out money, sign it and now. And every and today you see, this is very common. People send you, um, uh, money through phone pay and say it happened. I have accidentally sent it to you. Please send me back that money. And when you send it back, they hack your mobile and they get your KYC and everything is gone. So it is scary. Means even I remember, but now because of this scam, very getting very popular these days. I remember there was by uh, there was I was about to pay some one thousand. I had I had to pay one thousand rupee to some mechanic of mine, okay? So there was, uh, I had two names in the address book, uh, same name, two people in an address book by the same name. I sent it to other person, okay? I called him, he was good enough, he transferred me back that 1,000 rupees, which I sent it excellently. But these days, because of these, even you accidentally send it, no one will pay you back, oh, he might be an hacker. So now, due to the most of the trade and business online these days, there is an ever increasing demand to protect the data. You see, everything is getting online, like I'm talking about. Hackers are coming by new and innovative method. There is a series by the name of Jamtara. Have you seen it in Netflix? Netflix, there are two seasons available in that. Have you seen it? It's a Hindi and it's available in English also, special, especially for people from South part of India. It's a very good series. Have any one of you watched it? Jamtara. Yes. Uh, so you see that's that's happening in reality uh, if you have seen the second part of it that's the best uh, example and illustration of brute force attack the second part if someone has watched it that the the way he 
find out the ATM pin. So you see why this presence of crime syndicates. Uh, if you remember WannaCry 2017 attack, thanks to this attack that people are now uh, taking security seriously because earlier people, when we talk about, oh, we are in security, they thought we are security guards. But thanks to WannaCry, top level people started thinking security seriously. That WannaCry, basically it was a product of US government. Some crime syndicate stolen it, for stole it from there and modify it and release in the wild. Crime syndicates are available. Cyber armies, who who can who? Uh, uh, I think Saurabh is in the class very well. He can very understand what is the purpose of cyber armies. And yes, we are. Uh, you see, every now and then you see. I give you two example of the presence of cyber armies. Although it's well known, but uh, two examples of it. If you remember, in 2014 there was one movie by the name of Interview. That was a. Uh, uh, that was a satire on the life of a uh, North Korean dictator. So it, they were given warning that not to release that movie, but they went ahead and released that movie. They faced one of the biggest attack in which their systems were compromised, salary slips were released. So that was the work of North Korean cyber army. In 2012 or 13, during the Syria war, uh, Turkey shot down the plane of uh, Russia, I think Sukhoi. Next day, they face one of the biggest GDOS attack. Every now and then you hear the news, Pakistan hackers hacked India. Although this thing has reduced a lot because it has now uh, increased other, other side of it because you must have hit a lot. Because earlier you used to hear Chinese hackers hacked India, but now Chinese are crying that Indian hackers have hacked India. So every country these days have presence of cyber armies and it's very well required. And you know, because of OT security, more and more infrastructure we are uh, uh, we are bringing it online. So two attacks I would like to bring your attention here. If you if you have heard it in news, if you must have heard it in news around three four months ago, okay. So these two attacks happened in US. In one attack, hackers they controlled, they hacked the water purification plant, water treatment plant of some Florida, and they increases the chlorine percentage to 1,000 or 100%, which was supposed to be, which the normal limit is 4%. Luckily, fortunately, that person had, had detected that thing and it brought the level down. Otherwise, hundreds of people would have, thousands of people would have died. Another attack which happened in with uh, some Petroleum communication uh, channel was disrupted in and in some part of the US. So you see, these and it was a work of Chinese hackers. Then financial frauds. That's the reason you know these cyber security people are increasing. Again, if you really want to make your career, just give me a minute, wait. Okay, so that's the reason, you know, these things are increasing. I mean, the importance for it is increasing. But again, if you really want it to be a good cybersecurity professional, have a mix and match of uh, technical plus managerial certification. Okay. Don't be a, don't be a, uh, you know, don't restrict yourself to on one thing. Have insecurity, have variations. Because it's all mixed things, you know, it's all interlinked. Okay, difference between information security, I told you information security deals with information regardless of its format. Okay, be it paper, just like when you enter your organization office, you will see the guard, okay, then under other guard, then you see access control reader, that's all InfoSec. InfoSec is all about protecting data in any form. Cybersecurity is about protecting data in digital form. Approaches to cybersecurity. Okay, during this class, I will give you examples 
everywhere okay that examples may relate to country regions don't take although we are all indian so if i give examples we will not take it as an office but yes lot my times when i take international batches so i give examples of us middle east and all so sometimes we so that's the reason i tell you so approaches to cyber security ad hoc this is not at all a good approach i give you two examples here the approaches uh, suppose no offense to network people suppose there is a global net uh, there is a company a okay ceo resigned okay ceo resigned global network head asks to take extra responsibility till they found a ceo now this person had a good friend in f5 big ip he had a, he approached him and he made a very good sales pitch for web application firewall that is f5 asm he got carried he don't have much knowledge so he got carried away by those goody goody things you know so he got carried away by that and he gave an order of 10 asms and each cost 25 1000 dollars so total investment 250000 dollar correct unfortunately if had he looked at his infrastructure he has all his web application hosted in cloud when things are hosted in cloud cloud has its own uh, infrastructure controls to manage it So don't you think this twenty-five thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollar dollar was a waste? Had he looked into his infrastructure, he would have easily find it out that I don't need this. So this is what ad hoc approach. Another example: in two thousand seven, I went to Dubai. These days, uh, petrol dollars, you know, it's not that much because that is. Uh, winning, I would say, because of you know electric vehicles and all, and Middle East has has realized that that they have to look out, and that's the reason you know taxes are, are being levied on people and all. But at that time, it was a time of petrol dollar and peak. So I went to one training. I went to one company for a training. At that time, you know, I used to be a Cisco trainer. So I used to because the training certification you have seen. I have not mentioned my network security certification. I am. I am. Although this is expired now, but I did my CCNP, CCSP, CCI written in security, blue coat and Juniper certifications also. But that's the thing of the past. So I was there for one CCSP training. Okay, that is not this CCSP. The Cisco certified security professional. So what I realized, what I found that over, uh, if there were sixty five hundred switches, okay, if it's a high end switches which you even not found in small enterprises, medium level or high level enterprises, IPS, because you will find Cisco over there because in Middle East you will not find checkpoint. The checkpoint is Israel. <laughs> so IPS forty two sixty forty two sixty again it's on high end IPS okay router twenty eight hundred okay thirty four fifty switches so what is this what uh, what does this represent okay so they have those things not implemented in their network lying as it is lying openly in the labs people can do whatever they want to do. So someone made a sales page. They purchase it without thinking whether it relies, whether whether it's required or not. So that is an ad hoc approach. The second one is compliance based. Compliance based means this approach relies on regulation or standards to determine the security implementation. You know, compliance like ISO twenty seven thousand one, ISO uh, I would say. PCI DSS, GDPR, 
then we have uh, a bar. What is this? You know, these are compliance. So the cyber security, which is being driven by these compliances, that we call them a compliance-based security. Although this compliance security is, is foolproof in itself because they have controls. If you implement properly, you will not face any issues. You will not face any issues. But we get so much engrossed engrossed by this or obsessed by this compliance that our focus remains only on attaining the compliance, like tech check in the world, tick in the box approach and all. If this compliance-based security is so good, then why hacks are happening still now? Still hacks are happening. I am at Dr. Lal Pet Labs, which is ISO 27001 and PCA DSS certified, okay? The information details the data about their people, means their customers was found unsecured in an open S3 bucket. You know S3 bucket? S3 bucket is Amazon object storage. So again, Uber hack. I remember I was working for IAG, International Airline Group. They are PCI DSS. PSI, PCI DSS is more stringent and strict. They have to pay a hefty, but they still they are fighting some, uh, uh, I think, case in US regarding the revelation of data breach of PI data of their customer. So still, people get so much engrossed in maintaining the compliance or following the check in the box approach that they forget the actual purpose of compliance. Then it is risk based. This is a good approach. This approach relies on identifying the unique risk a particular organization faces and designing and implementing security controls to address the risk above, okay? So this is, in an organization, I would say, because compliance is, you cannot ignore. You don't have an option, okay? ISO 27001, I would say, it's like uh, ALU, everything, everywhere you will find it. It's a gold standard. Every industry will have it. But yes, people are misusing it, trust me. I, as a supplier audit, I audit one, one of one supplier of us, okay, which was like in Mumbai, okay. It's, they had they were ISO 27001 certified. I asked them, okay, show me the certificate. No, they show me the certificate. They showed me the certificate. I asked them, okay, show me the risk assessment. No, I asked them, show me ISMS. No idea. I asked them, okay, show me the management review meetings or training that you're conducting, no idea. <laughs> People are purchasing it like that. So in an organization, you have a common, you should be normally a combination of compliance-based and risk-based approach. We are using it. Compliance, it all driven by business as well as region. Just like if you're doing business in US, dealing with healthcare, HIPAA. If you're doing business in Europe, dealing with privacy data, GDPR. So you don't have an option there. You have to abide if there's a requirement, just like in GDPR regulation, even it's not uh, you know, uh, discretionary, you have to follow it because it's mandatory. If you're dealing with uh, privacy data of Europeans, not cities and residents, then you have to abide by GDPR. Otherwise there's a hefty fine. So combination of compliance-based and risk-based approach is what is being used in the industry. Okay, so role and importance of CIA. Okay, CIA, in, in, CIA will not leave you. Okay, CIA is the base of information security. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality means that no unauthorized person or process should be able to access your data. For example, if this is client, this is server, if you are doing communication, there are certain protocols like HTTP, FTP, Telnet. If you use protocols, even LDAP, then anyone with the help of Wireshark or any snicker, any sniffing tool can easily read your data. So this is an attack on confidentiality. 
Okay. How can you protect confidentiality, access control, encryption? And there are many control also, but just for example, that is. Then you have integrity. Integrity means no unauthorized person or process should be able to tamper your data. Suppose this is A, this is B, you are sending 1000 rupees here. You have encrypted it, but you haven't applied any integrity protection tools, correct? What happened now? Okay, what happened here now? This one, there's a hacker who modified this data and had extra zero to it. You will end up paying 9,000 rupees extra. Another example of integrity, uh, amazing if you remember, it's old incident. I don't remember the actual timing, but I read it somewhere. Uh, around two, three years, it was pre-COVID, I would say, because now world is divine to pre and post. It was pre-COVID this happened that Amazon EC2 instance around the world were unavailable. Amazon EC2 instance around the world were unavailable for people of, uh, because of some wrong change. So that is what integrity. So how can you protect again integrity, change management? hashing, and even access. Then you have availability. Data should be available to the user in a timely manner, okay? Like if I talk about, okay, so these three factors vary from organization to organization. These three factors vary from organization to organization. If I talk about any military organization, for them, Confidentiality is important. If I talk about government, military or government organization, confidentiality is important. If I talk about any financial organization, integrity is important. For a person like me who is into training business, okay, uh, for me, I give a damn to confidentiality. You can listen to my topic. I have, I am least bothered about it. Okay, listen to it. What you will do? <laughs> there are already always videos available. You can listen to it. But what I'm interested in, availability. I have my own controls. I build all my infrastructure around availability. You people normally have two laptops, one personal, one professional. I have two personal laptops, one professional. You people have one internet connection. I have three. Normally person use a simple uh, earphones, maybe 1,000, 2,000. I have my own personal Jabra speaker of 30,000. So that is what I have. So this is what I have made an investment around availability. So these three factors varies from organization to organization and it all works from, and it is all, you know, it all subject to what organization wants and all, all your control infrastructure revolves around this. Basic definitions of information security. Okay, what is this? So asset, anything which is of value to an organization. It could be your people, it could be infrastructure, it could be finance, it could be reputation. I remember I was part of one incident in 2017 where there was a data center outage in IAG, International Airline Groups. They had suffered an, they, they had suffered a loss of 200 million pounds. 100 million pounds was a direct loss, and another 100 million pounds was indirect loss. That was branding reputation. Vulnerability. It's a lack of countermeasure that or weakness that is in place. If I say antivirus not updated, this is what vulnerability. Port open, which is not supposed to be open vulnerability, guard sleeping, that is vulnerability, okay. Delhi, okay, so this is what vulnerability, threat, any potential or probable danger, potential or probable danger, which is associated with the exploitation of vulnerability. So for example, uh, I would say, AV not updated. And what are the two, two possible threats? One is hacker. 
second one is malware correct potential or probable danger i say delhi is a overpopulated city vulnerability what are the potential or probable threats i would say terrorism then epidemic or pandemic correct then you have flood or earthquake okay threat agent any potential or probable danger which has exploited the vulnerability in reality that is called a threat agent so out of this hacker finds out that antivirus is not updated and it has or oh, malware finds out the antivirus is not updated system is now infected with malware so this is what a threat agent so out of this previous example of delhi overpopulated city okay threat terrorism pandemic epidemic epidemic i would say more common then terror then then your uh, flood earthquake so out of that in 2021 specifically threat agent exploited the vulnerability threat is a uh, pandemic struck delhi so pandemic will be a threat agent another example ricket if you are vitamin if you have a vitamin d deficiency someone have a vitamin d deficiency that is what vulnerability okay then if, if someone has a vitamin d deficiency that's a vulnerability if then what are the possible and probable danger that it threats ricket okay liver problem platelets problem arthritis now if ricket virus finds out and infected you then that will become threat agent hope that the relationship between the two three is clear then comes risk risk is it's a likelihood of a whenever we talk about risk risk is a product of probability of occurrence and its corresponding business impact so somewhere you will find likelihood word like likelihood so don't get confused because in some definitions you will find likelihood some definitions you will find frequency okay or or even probability of occurrence so risk is it is a likelihood of a threat agent exploiting a vulnerability and corresponding business impact okay so i give you one example here so i was a part of one cyber attack in 2008 it was a uh, it was a virus of warm attack so it was a virus of warm attack so what happened every now and then we used to get an incident that this system is infected so frequency was high but as it was impacting the user system so impact was low so risk in total if a user system got infected was like a low only but one day the epo server macafe macafe epo server which was responsible for managing the complete infrastructure of that that was responsible for managing the complete infrastructure that came so that was responsible for managing the complete infrastructure that got infected the so risk was already high miss probability of frequency was already high and it make and when the high call it means high value target got infected impact was high so this becomes very high this is how if i look at formal definition of risk it is the product of probability of occurrence and its corresponding business impact then you have control or countermeasure control or countermeasures are put into place to mitigate the 
potential risk. Okay, like we implement antivirus, not update, update the antivirus. What my point? Clear? Any questions till now? Anyone? Okay. So, defense in depth. What is defense in depth? Now, around uh, in 2019, I would say, I went to Bhakla Nangal Dam. Okay. And there, I it was on hilltop. So, there I had to, you know, cross through six security checks in between before I reach the top, the dam. Why? Because if I have bad intentions, if I'm able to compromise one, another security control is waiting for me. If I look at the normal security architecture, this network architecture, you will find ISP, for ISP router. Then you have parameter router. Then you have parameter firewall. Then you have de departmental firewall. Then IPS. Then your workstation, which is implemented with antivirus or HIPS. This is what? This is a kind of defense in depth where you have controls implemented in series okay controls implemented in series so that if one fails other one is there to spot an attack okay clear so defense in depth is an approach to cyber security in which series of defensive mechanisms are layered in order to protect the valuable data and information so is an information assurance provides multiple redundant defensive measures in case a security control fails or vulnerability is exploited. If one mechanism fails, the another steps up immediately to thwart an attack. The multi-layered approach with intentional redundancy increases the security of a system as a whole and addresses many different attack vectors. Okay, so you can see in an organization you have different controls related to policies, procedures, physical security, parameter, network, host, application, and ultimately data. But this is based on this is also called as a castle and moat approach, where more security is placed around the traffic which is coming from outside. Okay, because they think that it is. Uh, today the first day we will not do much okay so it is just to uh, cover the basics and from wednesday onwards we will start doing the cloud and all so today we'll cover the basics so zero trust architecture so it was based on a castle and mode approach which means that traffic which is coming from outside they place more security they put more controls around that because they think that internal people has to be implicitly trusted but that days are gone that days are gone because these days insiders most days a study which says that the 60 percent of attacks are due to internal people not deliberately they do it in most of the cases sometimes in their ignorance also they become victim so zero trust says that no matter you are an outsider or insider please have same level of security around it if you are an outsider if I have a two-factor authentication for you, then I will have the same two-factor authentication inbuilt for my insider also. So zero trust architecture refers to the security concept and threat model that no longer assumes the actors, systems, or services operating from within the security parameter should be automatically trusted. And it says that I will trust, I will not trust you, I will all I will verify this line so it's an alternative security model that addresses a fundamental flaw of secure traditional strategy that data only needs to be protected from outside of an organization so it focus on business needs and functionality of an organization by implementing the network-centric security 
that provides passive access only to those needed. You know, I just give you a very simple example of zero trust. When you deploy firewall, you implicitly deny everything and explicitly, unless or until something is explicitly allowed. What is that? A kind of a zero trust architecture. Okay. It uses technology like multi factor authentication, identity and access management, orchestration, automation, encryption, and granular file foundations. Okay. It also calls for governance policies giving only the least amount of access as the person needs it. Controls. Controls are the countermeasures that you implement in an organization in order to protect against the attacks. Controls should always be selected and applied based on risk assessment of the information system. The risk assessment identifies system threats and vulnerabilities, and then security controls are selected to reduce or mitigate the risk, like policies, background checks, firewalls, IDS, security guards, etc. Controls belongs to different categories, okay? based on implementation and based on functionality. Based on implementation, how it is implemented, administrative control. Administrative controls are also called as soft control as they are management oriented. In an organization, we have security policies, procedures, standards, trainings, awareness, etc. So risk management that all comes under administrative controls. Then you have technical controls. They are also called as logical controls. For example, firewall, load balancers, IPS, IDS, encryption, hashing, web application firewall, access control, that all comes under technical controls, okay? Then you have physical controls, which is there to thwart a physical attack and to protect your physical infrastructure, security guard, locks, bullards, fences, okay? You have intrusion, the physical intrusion detection system, alarms, okay, CCTV, that all comes at physical controls, okay? Then control based on functionality, deterrent, preventive, corrective recovery, detective, compensative. What is deterrent? A deterrent access control is deployed to discourage the violation of security policies intended to discourage a potential attacker. So anything which deter a person from committing a mistake or a crime is deterrent. For example, large fines for speeding, login banner. You know the history behind login banner? There was one case which was brought into a court of law in US. One hacker was brought into a court of law under our charges that he had accessed the network in an unauthorized manner. He said, no, I didn't access it in an unauthorized manner, but as soon as I tried login, it says it has a login banner, welcome to this computer. Because earlier days, people just put warning banner for the sake of putting it. Since then, you know, the things had changed. Now, warning banners are a proper warning banners. Preventive, which prevent an attack from happening. Firewall, intrusion prevention system, security guards, etc. Corrective, which corrects an action, like your antivirus. If your file is detected as infected, it will quarantine the file or even delete the file. Okay, recovery. 
I would say backups. Okay. Then you have disaster recovery. These are recovery controls. Detective, which detects something wrong if something wrong is happening. CCTV, SIM tool, SOAR tools, job rotations, mandatory vacations, honey pots. Compensatory control, when your primary control is not working, you compensate that with secondary control. Suppose your network firewall is not sufficient enough to protect or prevent you from network attack, web application attack, you compensate that with web application attack. So one control can exhibit different functionality. So I cannot say that firewall will always be a preventive one. I give you an example. Firewall is primarily a logical and preventive control. But during the reconnaissance phase, if a hacker finds it out that this there is a firewall there and he decided not to go ahead, in that case, firewall had acted as a different control. Security guard, who is a preventive physical control. If a hack, if a person, an intruder, watched or finds out there is a guard at the gate, he decided not to go ahead and confront him. This is what? Different control. CCTV, which is a detective and physical control. If a person see that there is a CCTV, he decided not to go ahead. In that case, CCTV had acted as a different control. So one control can exhibit different functionality. You can be asked questions in the examination on the basis of this. What is GRC? This is again a buzzword. Okay, this is again a buzzword these days. GRC is nothing. Governance. First is this. This is not one word. This is combination of multiple words. Okay. So GRC is first is governance. What is governance? Governance is nothing, but it's a combination of processes. Plus organizational structure through which management exerts strategic control okay. and ensure InfoSec is aligned with business goals. So it's a combination of process like risk management, okay, risk management process, financial management process, resource management process, plus organization structure, steering committee, okay, risk committee, through which they exert strategic control and ensure the business infosec investment which are, they are making, it should be in alignment with the business. It is always the responsibility of board of directors. Okay. Risk management. Always remember, risk can never be eliminated completely. Even after applying all the risk, after applying all the controls, some risk will always be left. So it is a process by which an organization manages risk to an acceptable level. Risk management requires the development and implementation of internal controls to manage and mitigate the risk throughout the organization. Compliance, you know, the compliance. It or compliance all varies from organization and region to region. It is act of adhering to different regulations and standards. Remember, GRC of organizations varies from GRC of any organization varies from region and industry. Like there's a company which is working in US finance industry, their GRC will be quite different from the one which is working in Europe. Then comes due care. Due care. In terms of lot my time, just people get confused between that two. Or other thing you should remember, due care is a legal term, legal term. In US, if because if it is proven, if there is a breach, and if it is proven that management has not exercised due care, and it can land them in jail also. Due care is act of getting, due care is getting the control implemented, 
and due diligence is managing and maintaining that control. Like there is a requirement of firewalls, due care, provide budget and help them in purchasing of firewall, due diligence, help in managing and maintaining the firewall. Due care, if there's a requirement for people, due care, get them, let them hire people, provide the budget, due diligence, managing and maintaining those people. So due care shows that a company has taken responsibility for the activity that takes place within the organization and a corporation has taken all the necessary steps to help protect the company, its resources, and employees from possible threats. It's taking reasonable care in protecting the organization. It pertains to the legal duty. In US, uh, there, were, there is a rule called prudent men rule. As per this, if there is a breach, and if it is proven that management has not exercised due care, then it can land them in shape. I give you one example. There was a part of one data center outage for IAG. There was a loss. They have applied for cyber insurance. Survey so came in, and as a duke, and what he can look, what he was looking for, the traces of or evidences of duke here. So what he looked at, I'm talking in terms of network perspective. So what he looked at, firewalls, load balancers, switches, all critical devices in cluster, but or not. Correct. Another thing, all critical devices have multiple PSU. PSU means power supply unit connected to different power feeders. Correct. Multiple ISP links. Okay, so it was there. So that is what due care. Then comes due diligence. Continuing with the same example, due diligence means getting the control managed and getting the control managed. So here what happened, so same company, what happened there? So one incident, there was a firewall in cluster. And it was having two PSUs, power supply unit. PSU one, PSU two. PSU one, PSU two. This firewall went down. Engineer didn't act it for 10 days, no action. 11th day, this PSU went down, PSU of another firewall down, fine. Then no action till 14th day, this also went down. So can you help management responsible for it? No, because they provide you firewall and cluster, and everything, you didn't take care of it. So that is what a due diligence. So they have not followed the due diligence. So this is what all basics of it. Let me take you to some question answers on basic. From Wednesday onwards, we will start with the cloud computing. Any questions till now? And this is important. Sometimes questions related to simple uh, controls and all can come into the examination. That's the reason I had taken you through that. Give me a Why so silent? Are you getting it, mates? Be interactive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's getting it. Okay, thank you.
Okay, some basic questions, very basic. Okay. You can write it on chat or if you want to speak, but speak will because all of you start speaking it and then it will. So you can, okay, write it on chat and type the number. Okay, this is A, correct. This is an attack on integrity. Which information security goal is impacted when an organization security experience a DOS or DDoS attack? This is availability, correct. Yes, this is confidentiality. Murphy is working with management team in her company to classify data in an attempt to apply extra security control that, that will limit the likelihood of a data breach. What principle of information security is Murphy trying to enforce? Yes, confidentiality. Correct, Karthik. Because data classification, confidentiality. Look, you fall into the trap, Raji. Uh, although you have corrected yourself. No, so by mistake, I was pressed A. I know, but this is this is yeah, yeah. put it. Yes, it is. Because you know, web load balancer, you think it's about denial of service and you pick up, pick up this. Don't fall into this trap. Yes, sir, sir. I, by mistake, I pressed A instead of D. But yes, they do it deliberately, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go put this up there. Okay. Which one of the following is not an example of technical control? Data classification, correct. This is Wireshark. You are all techies, so you very well know what Wireshark is all about. This is confidentiality, correct. Which one of the following is an administrative control that can protect the confidentiality of encryption?
and this is how we will be proceeding it right topic questions topic questions so that you can very well correlate that how what kind of question comes in okay but again please be regular you are spending money on it okay plus this is time i hope you all are married okay so you're spending the time taking on weekdays so please be regular b non description expert this is what our ransomware now let me ransomware is an attack on bot yeah lot my times people think as it is encrypting it so this is an attack on available confidentiality but no this is an attack on availability which one of if the following is an example of administrative control Yes, security awareness training. Correct. Now, which one of the following principle imposes a standard of care upon an individual that is broad? Broad means due care. Broad means due care. Due diligence is more detailed. Answer is C. Okay. The another one is also related to that only. Frank is information security professional of a major corporation as he is working. he noticed that the door to a secure area has been left ajar so it was not under her responsibility but he has taken an action what is expected of him so this is again a due care okay now this is detective no look fence can be preventive raji look there are three heights of fence 3 to 4 feet okay 3 to 4 feet which is mainly deterrent but if we talk about 6 feet fence 8 feet fence they are preventive so fence is definitely a physical control fence can be a deterrent control because sometimes you are strolling casually and then you see a fence then preventive control if there is a fixed foot eight feet fence cannot be a detective control okay hope that is clear fence cannot be a detective control okay the last question of the day okay so today we'll conclude at this only because as it was the first day i don't want you to overwhelm with lot of information but yes this weekend this week we will cover in next 6 hours means on wednesday and thursday we will complete domain 1 okay that is fire suppression system sometimes people gives me an answer of b also okay because they think hardware is a physical no they are talking about physical control okay so so let's meet on wednesday now any questions anything before i wind up for today anything 
या कुछ बात करो यार वी विल बी देयर फॉर 36 आवर्स एंड गुड गुड सेशन सर थैंक यू स्लोली स्लोली विल बी कमिंग आउट एंड स्पीकिंग द फर्स्ट डे सो and let be of because yaar it's not an we are all working professionals saath mein it's not an end of journey ki hum padhaye aur kaam khatam it's a it's a start of a journey a relationship we are building it so let's be a friendly it's not let's not make it a trainer student let's be professional aaram se baat karo baat karte karte kaam karenge theek hai na sure sir sure okay thank you so okay fir kis din milenge bhi to delhi wale hain okay chaliye thank you thank you thank you sir Thanks, thanks so much.